Hello, Johnny from Eurogamer here. Now, if you're at all familiar with the channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of Sea of Thieves. At E3 this year, I sat down with studio head Craig Duncan and design director Mike Chapman to talk about what's coming up for the game, from cursed sails to forsaken shores and beyond. So, without any further ado, here's how the future of Sea of Thieves is shaping up. <gasps> The waves of change roll throughout the seas, and a new land is revealed! Now, if you kept even a cursory glance on the horizon during E3, chances are you will have seen this announcement trailer in which the next two expansions for Sea of Thieves were named, these being Cursed Sails and Forsaken Shores. Cursed Sails is coming out in July and takes the same tack as the game's first expansion, The Hungering Deep, by introducing a new AI threat. This threat, as the name suggests, is of course AI pirate ships crewed by skeletons, bringing the menacing, banana-munching undead to the seas of Sea of Thieves for the very first time. As well as making the waters a bit more populated, these ships will add a new sense of menace to proceedings, with these skeletons being, quite literally, heartless. If that has you worried you're going to be pursued relentlessly while trying to just round up a few chickens, however, you shouldn't worry too much. Apparently these ships will be similar to the skeleton forts in the sense that, most of the time, you can choose whether or not to engage with them. You might see one sailing along the horizon or anchored next to an island, Craig told me, and then it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to bring the fight to them. That's not to say these ships won't attack you, however, more to say that they won't always attack on sight. Indeed, currently the plan is to have skeleton ships rise out of the water next to players in a sudden ambush that, I'm told, looks really cool. The skeleton ships then will be about as aggressive as the Megalodon will be once that's added back into the game. As an emergent threat, the Megalodon will sometimes attack mercilessly, sometimes just take one bite out of a ship and then leave, and then sometimes it'll just be happy to mind its own business. Only occasionally a murderous super monster, in other words. Good to know. AI skeleton ships aren't the only things being added in Cursed Sails, mind you. Combat is about to get an awful lot more interesting thanks to the new Cursed Cannonballs. These cannonballs, as the name might suggest, are very different to your average lumps of iron, with each one effectively imparting its own status effect to the enemy ship. There's a ballast ball, for instance, which makes a ship ride lower in the water, so if you've peppered an enemy vessel above the waterline, hitting them with one of these will put all of those otherwise harmless holes beneath the waves, suddenly sending water rushing into the ship and consigning it to the ocean floor. Another cursed cannonball locks the enemy rudder in place for a time, leaving them unable to steer out of the way of any obstacles. Yet another one points all of the enemy's cannons straight up into the air, effectively rendering their weapons useless until a crew member gets behind each cannon and points it down again. The silent ball, meanwhile, prevents a rival crew from communicating with one another and... Perhaps strangest of all, there's the Jig Ball, which forces all the enemy crew to dance. As you can probably imagine, these cannonballs have the potential to be utterly devastating in a fight, and according to Rare, the intention is to have players hold on to them until the timing is absolutely perfect, taking advantage of a situation they've already engineered through more conventional means. Reading between the lines on this, I think we can be fairly certain that cursed cannonballs will be relatively scarce, so if you are planning to hit an enemy crew with a dozen jig balls in a row, you might be disappointed. Narratively, these cursed cannonballs are brought into the world by the skeleton ships and then, once the event is over, they'll stick around to be found on islands, in shipwrecks and in the barrels that pop up on the ocean. Once Cursed Sails is done and dusted, course will be set for the release of Forsaken Shores, which will add a new area to Sea of Thieves for the first time. When it launches in September, it'll give players access to the Devil's Roar, a geologically unstable region that's currently situated off the map. 
The shroud surrounding the Sea of Thieves will apparently roll back to reveal a channel leading to the Devil's Roar, presumably alongside some narrative reason for heading to the area and exploring it in the first place. Now, where before the landmasses of Sea of Thieves were inert and non-threatening, as long as you didn't mind the odd snake bite or skeleton attack, in the Devil's Roar it's the land itself you have to watch out for, with life-threatening hazards cropping up as you try to go about your business. Further details on Forsaken Shores are scant at this point, but as with the Hungering Deep and Cursed Sails before it, we can expect Forsaken Shores to leave behind a legacy once the timed event is over, which is to say that the Devil's Roar will become a permanent part of the map. So that's how the next two content updates for Sea of Thieves are shaping up, but that is far from all in terms of new stuff coming to Sea of Thieves this year. In addition to Cursed Sails and Forsaken Shores, there are three more as yet unannounced content updates coming to the game before the end of the year, with each one, so I'm told, being at least slightly larger than The Hungering Deep, if not more so. So even if you were disappointed with the size of the first expansion, you have to admit that's a lot of new stuff planned for 2018. Indeed, the release schedule is very much a part of the game plan for Sea of Thieves, a strategy that has seen the entire studio undergo a restructure. For one thing, Craig told me there are more people working on Sea of Thieves now than there were at launch. They've been split into three teams for the time being, with a fourth about to be added. Each of these teams is working on a different expansion, with the teams leapfrogging one another in terms of their release dates in order to keep the updates coming while ensuring the longest lead times possible. So after Cursed Sails and Forsaken Shores, the Hungering Deep team will return for the first as yet unannounced expansion, then we'll see two more after that in 2018 and then it's straight on into next year. These updates, of course, will be bridged by regular events like the Skeleton Thrones, and the idea behind all of this is to give players reasons to keep coming back to Sea of Thieves. Now, there's a cynical interpretation of these events that can be taken here, of course, which is to suggest that Sea of Thieves launched in an incomplete state, and that the game is being developed after the fact, which is something I've seen a few people suggest online. And sure, there were people who were disappointed with how much depth Sea of Thieves had to offer on launch, but I think to suggest it's being developed in full after it came out is a bit disingenuous. It's a viewpoint that ignores the attention being paid to the community and its most requested features. Cast your mind back to launch, and we were initially told the first update would be pets, but then Rare realised players wanted more AI threats and more things to do in general, and they changed the plan to please those players. Instead of releasing one big content update every six months or so, we're getting a steady stream of smaller updates in order to keep things fresh, and we're also hearing from Rare pretty much all of the time, which is similarly gratifying. Rare is putting a steady trickle of chum into the waters of Sea of Thieves, in other words, and while I can understand the desire to have a really big content update to sink one's teeth into, these smaller and more frequent updates are certainly more than enough to keep me interested, especially if it means more items like the cursed cannonballs, because quite frankly, those sound hilarious. Of course, with new content effectively being produced all the time at Rare, that must surely mean the Sea of Thieves team is a fairly expensive one to keep running. And with so many content updates planned for release, at some point you have to ask the question of monetization. Would they ever consider charging for these content packs? Craig and Mike played it fairly cool when I asked, saying they certainly have no plans to charge for new content updates for the foreseeable citing the reason that they aren't currently worried about the future of the game given the player data they've seen thus far. They didn't explicitly rule out ever charging for an update, mind you, but either way we won't be asked to stump up for DLC in Sea of Thieves just yet. And that is a fairly good look at the future of Sea of Thieves. With five content updates planned for the rest of this year, it certainly looks busy, but what do you think? Your thoughts are of course very welcome in the comments below. 
We've got loads of other videos on the channel, including plenty more on Sea of Thieves if of interest. Some of those should be on screen now, so do please give one of those a click. Do like and subscribe if you haven't already, because it really helps us out. Uh, but either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.